We know well the problems caused by climate change. Today's report is about solutions, a handbook of sorts on how to avoid more of this. And it says we need to cut emissions by more than 40% by the end of the decade. High emitting governments and corporations are not just turning a blind eye, they are adding fuel to the flames. First and foremost, we must triple the speed of the shift to renewable energy. And that means moving investments and subsidies from fossil fuels to renewables now. And if you want an example of what that looks like, come to this part of Northumberland. Coal was king here, and while the legacy is still present, they're moving on to something else. The wind farm off the coast here was the UK's first, the old coal port reinventing itself as a hub for clean energy. The cost of offshore wind has come down over the recent years, so wind is absolutely the future. It's clean and it's green and it replaces um, carbon-related fuels. And scientists say we need to use the energy we produce more efficiently, for example in our homes, in transport and food. But they also say we need to remove the carbon dioxide that's already in our atmosphere. So this is our new site that we've just acquired and uh, essentially we're going to rewild it. It's 327 hectares, 108 of which is woodland. Along the coast from Blythe at this former open cast coal mine, they're planting trees to soak up the legacy of emissions on this site. They're restoring what was once here. The UN scientists highlight work like this, capturing carbon and storing it away. So we are the most nature depleted country in the world and that is terrifying and it shouldn't be the case. But trees, as they grow, they're absorbing a lot of carbon and when they mature and it becomes a mature woodland, then they're not absorbing as much carbon, but they are holding it in place and that's really important. But this can't be seen as an alternative to slashing emissions, say experts, and renewables are the answer. The solutions are ours there that all we need to do is deploy them, that they are much cheaper to deploy than they have ever been. It is possible to turn the tide on the worst impacts of climate change, but it will require changes to energy, transport and how we treat nature, all of which are in our grasp. Deborah Cohen, News at 10 in Blythe.